Hey folks, today we're talking about characters or chars. So I've been on a bit of a text kick lately and I recently posted a video about Unicode and I definitely plan to follow that up with videos about wide characters and encodings like UTF-16, UTF-8. But before we get to that today, I wanted to make a quick video about some of the dangers of the character or the char data type in C. Wait, what, I can hear you saying, Char, it's so little and so cute and so harmless, right? It's the place you least expect to run into issues in your programs, but when it comes to portability, it can also be sort of a silent killer. Okay, maybe that's a little too dramatic, but I see character issues come up and bite students semester after semester, and so I thought it's worth taking a look at today. Now, the root issue here is that the C language standard does not actually precisely define what a char data type is. It defines a char as an integer type that represents the smallest addressable unit of memory. It is at least 8 bits, and it is typically 8 bits. So one byte. Well, in Java, it's two bytes. Great, thank you for sharing. But in C, it is typically one byte on just about any mainstream platform, microcontroller, processor, you know, any platform that I've seen recently you can reliably assume that it's one byte. But the size of the char is not usually the problem that comes up. Most often what I see people run into issues with is whether it is signed or unsigned. And according to the language standard, it is implementation defined, meaning that it can vary from one system to another, and that can cause you problems. Okay, so let's take a look at it and see how this works in practice. Okay, so we have a simple program here, and over here I have a make file that will compile it. So let's come down here and let's just play with it a little bit. We could mess around. I mean, we already have chars here, but let's let's do something a little more simple. Let's just start out and say, let's declare a char. I'm gonna call it C, and let's set it to a value. So let's just set it to 0x a8. Okay. For this demonstration, any number larger than 127 should work. I'm also using hexadecimal here. If you're unfamiliar, I have a video on why programmers like to use hex. Definitely check that out if this looks weird to you. But then let's come down here and let's just print it out. And we're going to print it out. Let's say C equals, and let's print it out in decimal and in hex. Okay, and we'll have C and C. Okay, so we're just printing out this character in two different formats, one just seeing the decimal number and one seeing the hexadecimal number. So now if we come down here and compile it and we run it, so I'm running this on Linux just to let you know. So what we see here is we see A8 here. So that's what we assigned it to. That looks good. The decimal value, in case you were wondering, is 168. So that's all great. Now let's say that we switched over. So I've got another uh, tab here, another um, terminal open that is in, this is for my Mac. Okay, so let's uh, clean it out and recompile it. And now if we run it here, now you'll notice that the output is definitely different because now our char data type is signed where before it was unsigned. Now you might be thinking, so what? What's a few extra Fs, I guess, right here? You know, you still see the A8, but you know, signed and unsigned integers behave very differently depending on what you're doing with them. So for example, say that I decided I wanted to shift off some bits. Like let's say that I wanted this to be, uh, let's, let's say that instead of printing out C, we wanted to shift off a couple of bits. Let's say we want to get rid of four. Then one thing you'll notice here is that if we compile and run, the signed version is filling those in with Fs, where if I came into back to my Linux virtual machine and recompile it, now it is filling it in with zeros. So that's one way in which they behave differently. So, and little things like that can cause bugs that you didn't even know you had until you try to move your code from one machine to another. So what do we do about it? Well, you know, it depends. If you are interested in writing portable code, you have a few options. One of them is to just use a type that is guaranteed to be signed or unsigned. Like for example, I could just say, I'm gonna use an unsigned char, or I can use a signed char. Either way, we will get predictable results because once I specify it, now it is locked in. Okay, so let's, so we, so like, yeah, if I want unsigned behavior, I can just use unsigned and now I should get same behavior here. And if I, if I recompile it here, now we get the same behavior on both sides, so that's nice. Another option, if you don't like unsigned char, that's kind of long, is you can also use something like uint8, underscore t, that's an unsigned 8-bit int. If we did that, we would have to come up here and include standard int.h. If you are not familiar with the standard integer types, uh, I have another video on those made a long time ago, check that out. But this will also work. So now we can compile it and run it. You can see we get that behavior, you know, unsigned as we expected. 
And if we compile it for Linux, we get predictably the same behavior. Okay, so that, that's another way we can solve this problem. Now in rare circumstances, this is not usually one that I go with, but sometimes you might be in a situation where maybe you do just have a char here and you wanna fix this problem. You wanna make sure it's unsigned, but you don't want to actually change the code at all. You, For whatever reason, you don't wanna modify the code as it was written, but you want to make sure your chars are unsigned. What you can do is come in here to your make file and in the C flags, just say dash F, unsigned char. And what this is doing, this is a compiler flag that just says, hey, you're telling GCC or Clang to just make sure to treat all chars as unsigned. So this makes it so regardless of the platform we're on, it should treat chars as unsigned. So now let's just make sure that worked. So you can see the compiler flag down here and then run it on our example. Okay, so that's cool, but that's actually not, you know, Linux was doing unsigned anyway. So let's look on my Mac. And here you see unsigned behavior. So those are a few different options you have available to you if you want to avoid these kinds of problems, whatever you do, just if you do care about portability in the programs that you write, do keep an eye on those chars and I'll see you in the next video.